why you should fast. Number one is fasting is the part of a Christian discipline. Important people in the Bible practice fasting like Moses, David, Elijah, Daniel, Anna, Paul, Jesus, just to name a few. You were created to fast. Think about it. We sleep about eight hours a day. That means that one third of our life we sleep. So if you live 75 years, that's 25 years of sleeping. 9,125 days of sleeping. And when you're sleeping, you're fasting. That's why the morning meal is called breakfast. It's because you're breaking the fast. So fasting is put into your body and if you're gonna live 75 years, 25 years you have fasted. I mean how incredible is that? But of course fasting is more than just not eating when you're sleeping. That time when you're not eating during those eight hours, the reason why you're not eating is because you're, well, you're sleeping. So fasting is really abstaining from food for spiritual reasons, not because you're trying to recover or get a good night's sleep. Jesus himself said, when you fast. He didn't say if you fast. So that means that Jesus expects his followers to fast. The same way he expects them to pray, he expects them to be generous and he expects them to love their neighbor. Jesus modeled fasting and therefore fasting is supposed to be a part of every Christian's journey and every Christian's sanctification. Now do you need to fast to be saved? Of course not. But you need to fast to be sanctified, to be more like Jesus Christ. The second reason of fasting is you must understand is the first temptation that Adam, Israel and Jesus had was with food. And I do believe there is an importance in that. Like for example, let's look at Adam. Adam's temptation was with eating. It was with food. We see that God clearly stated not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Not to think, not, God didn't say don't think about it. God didn't say don't look at it. He said not to eat it. We see with Israel, same thing. The moment they exited Egypt and they went through the Red Sea, they've experienced hunger. They've experienced thirst and they started to complain. So for first few days they were forced to fast. Of course they whined about it. Let me read you the verse. It's a really interesting verse. Exodus chapter 16 verse 3. And the children of Israel said to them, All that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat and when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So that means that they experienced hunger and instead of drawing near to God, which what happens when you fast, they just started to complain and say God is trying to kill us. They should have fasted. It wouldn't hurt them. It would have hurt their flesh but their spiritual life would have been just fine and they didn't. Jesus experienced food temptation. His first temptation we see that was involving food. Food is good. We know that. Food is a gift from God but it's given to satisfy us and it's given, given to us as a source of our strength meaning physical strength. It's like our fuel. Unfortunately, a lot of people have made food their idol. They've made, made food to become like their spiritual medicine. Some people medicate themselves by overeating. And some people, they use their fridge as a point of comfort instead of relying on the Holy Spirit as their comfort. That's why fasting comes difficult for them because they have to address this unhealthy relationship they have with food. They've made food into an idol instead of a fuel for their body. That's where the temptation with food comes in. You know, gluttony is still a sin. Gluttony is when we put food over God. Gluttony is when we eat more than we should. Gluttony is when we have this obsessive desire and lust after food. Some people don't see that as lusting food because they think, well, food is not bad. But when you lust after you know, pornography or other things, then that's bad. My friend, any lust of the flesh is not good. And we have to live our life disciplining our flesh and overcoming the temptation with food. I really believe that if you overcome temptation with food, you will train your body, your flesh, how to overcome the rest of the temptations. Because really fasting is a preparation for a temptation. You are training your body what to do when it wants something that God says it's not what this body should have. You're pretty much training your appetites. Hey, this is forbidden. This is not right. This is not good. And when you don't develop a life of fasting, your flesh is not disciplined. And during the time of temptation, it will control you instead of you controlling it. The third reason for fasting is fasting is trading the bowl for the blessing. What I mean by that is you are trading the temporary for the eternal. You are trading the physical for the spiritual. You probably remember what I'm talking about now by Jacob and Esau's story. Jacob traded the bowl of soup for the birthright, for the blessing. And Esau, he traded the blessing 
for the bowl of soup. Let's put it in a, today's terminology. Jacob fasted and Esau didn't fast. Esau had all the blessings. All he needed to do was to go for a short time of hunger and he would maintain his blessing. Instead of fasting for a short time, he yielded to the cravings of his flesh and because of that he lost his blessing. I wonder how many people lose God's blessing in their life. Not salvation but blessing of God, breakthrough in their life. Because when the Lord wants them to fast, they feast. Hmm. Jacob on the other hand, he had a meal prepared, it was his, he decided to forego. He decided to let go of that and he fasted because now his meal was eaten by his brother. Because of that fasting, he got the birthright. So he traded the bowl to get the blessing. Because I hear a lot of people saying, oh, you know, Esau traded the blessing for the bowl. Yes, but Jacob traded the bowl for the blessing. Do you know that you can trade your bowl for a blessing? I'm not saying you can squeeze God, corner God, but what I'm saying is there's breakthrough and there's definitely benefits to fasting. Your sensitivity to God will be sharpened. Your discipline will increase. You will become more like Christ because you're doing what He did and you will gain mastery over your flesh and over yourself which is the fruit of the Spirit, self-control. We're not talking about some kind of a Middle Eastern or, or some kind of a Buddhism or something where you practice discipline for the sake of discipline. No, we're talking about discipline for the sake of devotion. Discipline for the sake of pursuit of the Lord. That's what the purpose of fasting is. Not for the sake of losing weight. It's not for diet. It's for devotion. Come on somebody. Number four, is fasting increases your spiritual weight while decreasing your physical weight. Now fasting does not increase your spiritual worth. It's important to notice that. For those people who struggle in their identity in Christ might watch a video like this and feel like, oh man, God doesn't love me. That is the furthest thing from the truth because fasting doesn't make you be more loving to God. God doesn't love you more or less because you fast and pray. God's love for you is eternal. God's love for you is unconditional. So your worth doesn't change with fasting but your spiritual weight does. Your awareness of your authority in Christ does. Your awareness of your anointing. A lot of times what happens during fasting is like an olive. Olive has all the oil inside, but unless the olive is crushed, the oil doesn't come out. How do you extract oil from olive? You crush it. So fasting becomes a season of crushing, a season of surrender, of consecration, a season of brokenness, a season of contriteness. You're breaking your pride and oil begins to flow. It's not that you get the oil. No, the oil is released. The oil is in you. The anointing is in you, the Bible says. But when you go through the season of denial, the season of consecration, the season of sanctification, the season of purification, something begins to happen. You release the oil that you've always had. And so fasting helps you to increase your spiritual weight, not your spiritual worth. And while in fasting you can lose physical weight, I do believe you get it back as a spiritual weight. Personally, I've seen huge breakthroughs in my life through fasting. Let me say again, through fasting. The breakthrough doesn't come from fasting. Breakthrough comes from God and fasting is one of the ways we seek Him. It's seeking God with diligence. The Bible says He rewards those who diligently seek Him. I believe the word diligent, that effective prayer of the righteous man is fasting. Fasting is the way you humble yourself before God and I've seen chains broken. I've seen certain things I've battled with where the Lord has given me victory in those areas when I humbled myself to fast because fasting is not something that boosts me. It's something that breaks me. I've seen my ministry go to another level through an extended season of fasting and it's something that we do as our team. This is not to brag, this is to invite you and say, hey, let's do it together. Let's get broken together. You know, Jesus, before He multiplied bread, guess what He did? He broke the bread. See, some of you, you want a multiplication, you want a blessing to the world. It's like, God, I want to be used by you. And God's like, are you willing to let me break you? Oh no, God, I don't want to do that. I just want to eat my, my hamburger and my, my chips and drink my Coke. That, that's, that's not the way of the breaking. That's not the way of the breakthrough. That's not the way of being a blessing. I've seen that personally, firsthand. And so, I'm not a special kid, okay? I don't have what it takes to be successful. I really believe that it's the grace of God and the key to the grace of God is humility and the key to humility is obedience and the key to obedience is fasting. So I want to invite you to do that. I want, you, I want to invite you to develop it as a lifestyle. I want to invite you to develop it as a habit. Don't just fast when you had problems. Don't just fast when you had uh, some kind of uh, issues. You know, fast because you want to draw closer to God. Again, God doesn't love you more because you fast. And God doesn't love you less if you don't fast. But it's about your being broken. And if you are two loaves and two fish and you feel like I don't have what it takes, just give yourself into God's hands. But I got to warn you, He's going to start breaking you. God doesn't bless what He doesn't break. 
Mm. God doesn't release oil out of an olive until he crushes it. Unless the grain seed falls into the ground and dies, it remains one. Jesus says if you want to find life, you got to lose it. So the price for being used by God is you got to be broken. And that's really what fasting helps us. Now, you can still be stubborn and fast, but fasting helps to pave a way to brokenness, which yields to breakthrough, which yields to us being a blessing to the world. Thank you for watching this video. Hey, what is some of the reasons you fast? Let me know in the comments below.